Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. And on this week's podcast, we're going to be talking about probiotic foods for colds and flu. Over the last decade, more and more research has shown that having a lot of good bacteria in your gut does, in fact, appear to improve the body's immune response. This, in turn, helps the body be prepared to fight off certain infections, the common cold, flus, um, all kinds of things that tend to be worse in the fall and winter months. Now, consuming prebiotics and probiotic foods, and prebiotics are fibers like fruits, vegetables, um, also seeds, nuts, some grains. They all help to feed the probiotics in your gut. And you can feed them and make them grow and multiply, make your microbiome very, very strong. And then you can lower your chances of getting a cold. And if you do catch a cold, they help reduce the severity of your symptoms and shorten how long it will last. Now, they say 70, some say 80% of your body's immune system lives in your gut. And, um, you know, this, these immune cells, your body's immune cells live in there. And there's roughly 100 trillion immune cells that make up your gut microbiome and play a big role in the strength of your immune system. The local immune system of the gut has two main functions, protect against infections and to protect against the uptake of or harmful immune responses to food antigens. And having a healthy, diverse gut microbiome makes it difficult for illness causing bacteria and viruses to take hold. If you have a weak, sparsely populated microbiome with a shortage of good bacteria, it can leave you open to illnesses like colds and flu. Now, the intestinal immune system contains more antibody-producing cells than the rest of the body put together. The fluids that come from the digestive system, things like mucus and saliva, are as rich as breast milk, both in health-supporting and disease-preventing factors. Our immune system makes antibodies that fight bacteria, virus, and toxins. And one of the most common antibodies, called uh, secretatory IgA, or immu Immunoglobulin A is found in mucous membranes that are lining the nose, the windpipes, and the lung. IgA acts as the body's warning and security system. When IgA levels are adequate, these antibodies can prevent cold and flu viruses from entering the body through the nasal and respiratory tract. Having enough IgA is extremely important because these special antibodies go after both viral and bacterial invaders in your upper respiratory tract. Deactivating them and allowing the immune system to destroy them. Having enough IgA can prevent a cold or flu from getting a foothold in your respiratory tract because once a virus infects the cells, it starts to replicate and then it just wreaks havoc on you um, and causes everything to spiral. So researchers have found that the bacteria Lactobacillus planetarum is abundant in cultured vegetables and it's also in kefir um, and Lactobacillus acidophilus also in kefir along with L. Rominus and bifidobacteria, um, and we have a whole blog on how to build up your bifidobacteria, reduces the risk of in respiratory infections by enhancing um, your immunity. They also added the prebiotic inulin in their study, and that's one of the ingredients in our Prebio Plus that we use to feed good bacteria and make it strong because it makes the probiotics grow and multiply like crazy. So these particular strains that I just mentioned um, increase IgA and can stop the virus from replicating, thus helping to prevent cold, influenza, and other respiratory infections. So taking the probiotic foods and prebiotics, um, they found in several studies resulted in the same protection and reduction of symptoms uh, and duration of the cold, how, I mean, how long it lasted, um, in those who did not get sick, they found that they had high levels in their body. And one study showed 16 cases of flu in the placebo group compared to just three in the, in the probiotic group, along with a 35% reduction in the number of colds, 39% reduction in cough duration, 4.5 days versus 7.3, um, and 25% reduction in the number of days of acute upper rep respiratory infections, which was 4.6 days, versus 6.1 days. Now, um, L. planetarium is one of the bacteria that I mentioned, and there was another study done on this um, special probiotic that I really love, 
and they found it had a huge impact on saving lives of thousands of infants who had sepsis, which is a deadly, massive immune response to a bacterial infection that gets into the blood. 600,000 infants die annually from sepsis, primarily in developing countries, and research has been long searching to try to find a way to stop it for the last over 20 years. And Dr. Pinka, a a pediatrician at the University of Nebraska Medical Center College of Public Health, who led the study, was searching for answers. They screened 280 different bacteria strains until one day they found the healthy strain, Lactobacillus spinatarum, um, isolated in the diaper of a healthy Indian baby. They started giving infant, infants El Planetarum, the kind of lactic, lactic acid bacteria that we have in cultured vegetables, also in kefir. And um, they added the prebiotic uh, fruto-oleosaccharide, which is referenced as FOS, which is inulin, um, to promote growth and sustain colonization of that probiotic strain. So they used a prebiotic to make it stronger, and they used the particular strain to help the baby to to have um, all these babies to get this strain into their systems. And after one week of giving the babies the cocktail of the probiotic and the prebiotic, death and sepsis dropped by 40% from 9 to 5.4%. But then something else happened that they didn't really expect. The probiotics began to help with different types of infection, including those that were in the lungs. Respiratory infections dropped by 30%. And that was a big surprise because we didn't think that gut bacteria was going to work on a different organ, said the doctor who was doing the study. They actually stopped the trial prematurely since it was working so well. They were going to plan to enroll 8,000 babies, but um, we stopped at over 4,000 infants because it was working so well. We thought we needed to get these to the, to the babies. Um, the beneficial bacteria can push out harmful bacteria in the baby's gut by changing the environment, or simply using up resources. So basically what that means is uh, this particular strain of bacteria, it kind of binds with the pathogens, and it uses the pathogen's food um, as fuel. And so then when it exits the body in a three to four days, it takes that the pathogens with it, but it also the pathogens die because they, they can't survive because they don't have any food. And what's really cool, too, is that... Um, these beneficial bacteria also produce a compound that strengthens the wall, you know, of the gut lining and helps prevent a barrier to prevent the bad bacteria going through the wall into the bloodstream. And it can jumpstart a baby's immune system, but it can do that with you too. Um, they can, and the doctor stated that these probiotics can be much stronger than drugs. Um, and protecting your the lining of your gut is so, so important. That's done by a special bacteria called acromantia. And a lot of people will get tested and they won't see that they have acromancia because they're having all kinds of IBS problems. But when they test for these things, whenever you get testing done and they say, oh, I don't have this bacteria in my gut, they're not testing all the subspecies and the smaller amounts. They can only do this broad testing. So it's probably there. It's just very dormant. You can't really, you can't really lose it completely. You just start to need to feed it. And one of the greatest ways to feed acromancia is with apples and berries, and it loves that, especially apple peels. I have a whole article on this, and um, I'm going to put it in the link below. It'll be under the bifidobacteria um, in that link, and you'll see all these different ways you can strengthen your immune system, protect your gut barrier, make acromancy, which is like a fourth of your gut bacteria, make that very strong, and that keeps out pathogens and keeps you from having things like IBS, leaky gut, histamine problems. It's a very important bacteria that people take for granted. And if you want to just do something simple and eat a lot of apple peels, um, it it loves apples and apple peels and berries. So um, now your immune system, bifidobacteria is really responsible. That's the bacteria that's really responsible for your immune system. It's the most important one you have. It's the one you get at birth, um, but it's very important for adults too, because it often diminishes when it doesn't have to. Bifido helps to activate your immune system and keep it strong when you're first born and much, much more. It's what you get from your mother when you're born, and um, they call it the young bacteria. And if you have lots of Bifido bacteria, it will feed all the other bacteria in your gut as well because it's that important. And it keeps your immune system activated and strong. And if you're missing that, um, it can be very hard on you. Uh, You start having all kinds of problems 
autoimmune diseases, if the fiddle's missing, you're, you're going to get in trouble. And it's very important to keep that bacteria strong. Um, we have a great and easy way to do it. Um, cultured foods are great, but it's really important that you feed that particular strain of bacteria and HMOs, which are human milk oleosaccharides, although they're not made from human milk, they're fermented, feeds that bacteria and makes it grow like crazy. And you don't even have to take it for very long. It's just a few weeks. It's just a powder. You put it in our smoothies, a keeper smoothies, and it just jump starts your immune system. It, and it grows really fast from that. It's so important that they're putting it in baby formulas because it's your baby's most abundant bacteria. It's 80%. And it's what really gets the immune system going. And they usually get it from mom's milk or from the mother's you know, when they go through the vaginal canal, they get it that way, but it's a really important bacteria. And it um, consuming HMO is one of the best ways to make more bifido. And it's just a prebiotic, basically. And you also, when you take HMOs, help the acromantia, which I just talked about earlier. Um, that helps heal and seal the gut. It feeds the acromantia very, very well. And it's, it's a very important one to take for both bifido and acromantia. So when it stimulates the immune system, let's say you're taking some HMOs, you're taking your kefir smoothies. I have a Get Better Kefir smoothie that does this all in one shot in your morning smoothie. You can get it all done in, in the morning. And um, when you take this, it stimulates the innate immune responses and it inhibits pathogens like E. coli. It reduces inflammation. And uh, Bifido longum subspecies and infantis is also boosts the production of proteins that close the gaps between gut cells to keep microbes out of the bloodstreams that will, you know, and it also increases anti-inflammatory molecules that just greatly boost the immune system. So to achieve those beneficial results, um, B. infantis has to feed on these HMOs, which is a prebiotic. It has to, to get strong. It needs those um, to get very, very strong. And that's why I recommend this Get Better Keeper Smoothie. You don't have to take it forever. Well, the smoothie I would take all the time. I haven't taken it for 20 years. But you don't, that HMOs you only need for a short amount of time to get them going. And then you can do it a couple times a year just to boost yourself up and um, keep your immune system strong. And then you just sail through cold and flu season because you've really activated your immune system responses and also your immune system to keep you healthy and to keep the pathogens out. And it's not as hard as you think. I mean, the smoothie that I recommend, and you can just do this, but just take an HMO. You don't have to take the smoothie. But kefir feeds the fiddle bacteria very, very well. It doesn't have back the fiddle, but it feeds it. And so I, I tell you, I don't think I emphasize this enough. Everybody should be doing kefir. Kefir is 50 plus good bacteria in it. But I've been doing this 22 years, and it is... Honestly, I just don't go very long without it because I don't do well without it. It is just lowers inflammation. It keeps my immune system strong. It makes me feel better emotionally too. And I just I just can't think of another another culture that has as many benefits. They all do different things. So don't get me wrong. There's a lot of reasons to do different um, cultures. Uh, for instance, cultured vegetables have more planetarium than kefir does by a landslide. So that's a good one. And then there's, you know, the HMOs, which is not a bacteria, but a prebiotic. So there's all these little things you can do that we just don't understand. We just don't know. Um, but you'll feel the difference when you start to really boost your immune system with these foods and with prebiotics. Um, it just, it, it's an amazing feeling. You'll feel younger. So here's the deal. With all of this, just start with the Get Better Kefir Smoothie. It's got HMOs. It's also got something called Simple Reds, which is just berries ground into powder. They're, poly, they're red phenols, and they are so powerful at feeding bacteria, but they're so good for your heart. They're good for your immune system. So there's three things in this kefir smoothie. Fruit, no, four. Fruit, um, kefir, HMOs, and the red phenols. And you just – takes less than a couple minutes to make. Just throw it in a blender. That one thing that you do will make a huge difference uh, with you going into cold flu season. With your immune system, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel so much better. I hear, I get this all the time. I feel so much better. It just, it hits every, it hits everything. Um, every part of your immune system, everything you need, um, your microbiome starts to flourish and you start to feel better. Now, 
it does kill pathogens. So whenever you shift and you add a lot of, you start shifting your bad bacteria to good bacteria, if you have a lot of bad bacteria, um, those things die off. And they have liposaccharides that basically are just toxins that die off when your good bacteria dominates and takes over the bad bacteria and kills them. So you might feel a little funny at first as they die off. Candida can give off like 80 toxins, and it definitely goes after that if you have an abundance of that. But then once you've done with that, it's just you feel so great. They call it uh, a healing crisis. But it's it's basically a Herkimer reaction, which means it's you can feel a little tired, kind of feel a little, you know, might have more loose bowels, and it just as bad bacteria dies off, and then your gut switches over, and then you start craving different foods, you start feeling better, um, you have more energy, kind of get that kick in your step, you know? And it's an amazing thing. People just don't know what's going on in their gut. And there's 100 trillion bacteria that are trying to keep you well. And when you feed them and they grow, they go after everything. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So I'm just helping you get there to keep your immune system strong, especially during cold and flu season, because we've kind of been through the ringer on that. So this is just um, some of the things that I do. I do all of this. Um, I love it. It's the funnest thing. I don't have to take the HMOs anymore, but I do do the simple res two or three times a week. I make a kefir smoothie almost every day um, because it just, well, it's easy for me. And I really enjoy it and I feel better when I have it. So um, those are just some of my suggestions. And just think about your microbiome when you eat. Think about what you're feeding it. You know, um, you're going to make it grow and multiply if you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and healthy fats, healthy proteins, you're going to get a lot of good benefits from that. But if you're eating processed and sugars, you're going to feed the bad bacteria. It's plain and simple. And um, just so every time you eat, try to think of, you know, who you're feeding and what's growing inside of you. Because it's a whole city down there and they're all fighting for dominance. It's a pretty interesting thing to watch, uh, to experience and understand uh, watch you can't really watch it but you can on some of the um i've seen some videos on it. it's pretty impressive what really goes on in there for instance yeast will shoot at each other with a liquid to try to kill each other for dominance and bacteria is going after the harmful bacteria and vice versa it can happen the opposite way too so anyway those are just a few things to help you keep you strong to keep you healthy it's not that hard i know this sounds like it is but it's not it's just throwing four things in a blender and you're having it for breakfast and i did it this morning i had what did i have i had mangoes and strawberries i had some red fetal powder and i had some kefir in there and then i threw in a couple spoon spoonfuls of el ruderite yogurt i blended it all up and then i had a matcha latte that i make myself and i had that with it it's delicious by the way and like my matcha tea that also has some prebiotics in it and some good stuff that's going to feed your gut And I love that in the morning because it's so easy. I even make my own almond milk like once a week so I could have a lot of matcha tea. I love that. So I also like coffee, but I've kind of been doing matcha just because I'm enjoying it and it gives me more energy. So that's another thing I do. And that takes less time to make the coffee. So I really enjoy that. So sometimes when I'm busy, I do that. So anyway, I hope this helps you. I hope you'll boost up your immune system. I hope you'll stay really healthy through this cold flu season. If you don't, these foods will help the... If you get a cold, don't worry about it. Don't freak out or a virus or whatever. Just keep eating these foods because it will help shorten the duration of it. And uh, that's the goal. You want to just keep doing more and more to your body stays healthy and takes care of you all by itself. Your immune system can do that. It's a very intelligent machine. It knows what to do. You just got to feed it the right stuff. That's all really that it is. That and your emotions and keep stress at bay but also feed it the things that it needs to stay strong. And you're off to the races. It's awesome. So have a good week, guys, and I hope you uh, will tune in next week. And as always, uh, make a kefir smoothie. It's life-changing. It was for me. Have a good one, guys. Bye.